Hello there, and welcome to the King Grimm Show, where I, King Grimm, or the King of Gamers, whatever you prefer, will go back to my childhood and play a game that I never finished, or maybe never played at all. Now, I had a bit of a hard time figuring out what game I would talk about, since going back to my childhood is rough. Show me. So to get inspiration, I booted up Smash and looked at all the trophies I had collected, and that's when I found this guy, King K. Rool, a character I've always wanted in Smash. He fits so darn perfectly, I mean, why is he in the game? Why? Why? Though I find it strange that I want King K. Rool in this game, since I've only played two games with this character, uh, Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong 64. I've only beaten the former one, sadly, but... This whole ordeal made me think about something, and that's the fact that I never knew that Donkey Kong Country had two sequels. So, after realizing that, I went to the Nintendo eShop and looked for Diddy's Conquest. Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest was developed by the highly loved Rareware, now called Rare, of Nintendo back in 95, just a year after the first game in the series, Donkey Kong Country. As the game came out, it met with brilliant reviews that even went over its previous games, which, by the way, got fantastic reviews as well, and sold over 4 million copies worldwide. These numbers would make any video game developers kill to get, and we were thrilled in its glory. If you didn't grow up with the SNES or the N64, then the best evidence that I can give you to prove that they were loved is simply going to any video on YouTube that holds anything created by Rare and read the comments. These guys are legends. I would uh, get the game on SNES, trust me when I say that. Uh, it's only that my SNES um, is kind of untouchable at the moment because my brother uh, lives different than stuff like that, so it's kind of difficult to get hold of it. Uh, plus the game uh, on the eShop only costs like 56 kroner, which equals to um, uh, these currencies. Anyway, let's boot up the game and see if it is as good as the previ previous one. Uh, every single fan is claiming it, so, well, let's have a look. Put this away, where did I put my other controller? Yeah! Prefer the gold controller. I don't know why, but I feel kind of sad and nostalgic now. Ah, here we are! Good old SNES graphics and music that can make any grown man cry in his bed for a time machine. Fantastic. Anyway, as we begin the game, we... Oh, oh my god! That, that's horrible! Are you telling me that we won't be able to play as the gorilla? We need to save him! He knew! Okay, listen here, asshole. Donkey. An ass? No? Okay, then. Listen here, I know that he is more popular, but that doesn't mean that you're not his family. Now get to it! Okay, so to be completely honest, I have absolutely no memory of the gameplay department of the first DK Country. However, I do remember that you can control one of the two playable characters once you've got both of them out. I just need to remember the button. Uh, which one was it again? Select? Real? <laughs> what is select button? I mean, is there any game that utilizes that button? I mean, today? I mean, the PlayStation controller got rid of it, so... <laughs> Whatever. Since Donkey Kong has been kidnapped by King K. Rool... Captain. Sorry, Captain K. Rool. We have Dixie Kong to help us. Gameplay-wise, she's much more agile in the air than Diddy. She can hover in the air, which I have to say is brilliant, as many of the game's stages would be almost impossible without her. And just like the previous game, one hit and you'll lose the character and the barrel is what you need to find to get one of them back. That means that two hits, you're dead. 
Now, I will admit that I find it funny uh, that the newest member of the country family, uh, Tropical Freeze, gives each character two lives rather than one. It just shows that new games are way too easy on this gamer, and in comparison, <laughs> let me just say this. Diddy's Conquest makes Tropical Freeze feel like a tropical breeze. Anyway, as we're still going around, I did find this cannonball. I don't really know what to do with it. Maybe just throw it at an enemy. Maybe not. Okay, here's a cannon, and if I know my pirate lore, cannon plus balls equals cab. Ah yes, uh, these mini games can be found all over the game. They can range all from kill all the enemies, find the token before the time runs out, or collect all the stars. This gives you a creme coin, which depicts King K. Rule. Captain. Sorry, Captain K. Rule. I will talk about the creme coins later on. But continuing through Gangplank Galleon leads us to this guy. Cranky guy. Really? <laughs> you. you you go from the conversation by just moving the analog stick? Okay then, let's see what he has to say. Okay, so Cranky simply gives you some advice for the game, what to do on each stage and what you'll get. Some of the options cost coins that you can find around every world. Do not confuse that currency with the cram coins. Strangely enough, you only leave the conversation in the introduction of the cutscene. After going inside, you can move everything and the only thing that you'll leave is go down through the options and find the right button. This includes all the Kongs that you can meet and they are Cranky Kong who gives you advice, Swanky Kong who gives you quizzes, Funky Kong who lets you move across the island and Brinkley Kong who tells you how to play the game and <sighs> lets you save. You'll understand later why that makes me a bit grumpy. Anyway, as we continue through the first world we meet the first of many bosses, Crow. I'll just say this straight now, the bosses in this game are much more memorable than the bosses from the first game. There you only have to job and jump on their head except like one boss or something, but now there are bosses that change strategy and tactics. Plus where the first game reused bosses, this game does it only once, but actually have a nice way of doing this. Plus once you've defeated the boss, again you'll get a creme coin. So we're done with the first world, and we come to the second one, a lava world. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have a feeling that I will end up dead several times in one of these Yeah, there we go. This game has some sort of singular way of giving you several levels with certain types. Water type, lava type, ice type, a mine, pirate ship, swamps, beehive, beehives. Roller coasters, aka minecarts from the first game, and so on. All of these types have variations to them. Some water levels require you to never hit the water because of piranhas, a mine level that will make you float upwards when you jump, a roller coaster where a ghost is after you, so you have to hit specific barrels to gain time, and some stages makes you play as some of the Kong's animal friends. Rambi the Rhino, who can run into anything, and Guard the Swordfish, who is an underwater saint, Ratley the Rattlesnake, who can jump really high, and some others. As we get through this world, we... To just change the topic for a minute, uh, the music in this game is fantastic. It is composed by the previous compo uh, the guy who did the uh, previous composed the previous game as well, David Wise, and it is a long time since I've heard such a good soundtrack. Uh, and also, if I can just bring up my opinions pretty uh, fast, I think that Mine in Melancholy, the one you're hearing probably right now. It's the best one in the game, hands down. Now, obviously, many people are mentioning Sticky Brush, uh, Sticky Brush Symphony, but remember that music is all about preference, and this, mwah, extraordinaire. Oh shit, what's my shot? Anyway, as we continue our way through Crocodile Cauldron, with Oh shit, I thought the calcium was still going on. <laughs> So we kill this a-hole and continue on our journey to the next area of the island, Creme Quay, which is a swamp world. Ugh, I hate swamps in video games. Actually, I freaking love them. I HATE SWAMP! You see? <laughs> Just take a deep breath. Okay. Huh, 
first game over on World 3. Eh, it's alright, all we have to do is... You know what I like? I love games that doesn't tell you how the fuck to say! Okay, so Wrinkle Kong does kind of tell you, but I didn't know that! I thought you could just push the button or something to get bring up a menu of some sort. JESUS! There you got you a-hole! After the swamp we get to Crazy Kremlin, which holds several roller coaster stages. Seriously, why are we against the kid? Captain! Captain that gives its people a party all night kind of society. I'd roll with the Krems. You could choose a party or banana fiesta and with, while I love bananas, I'd go with a party in the Crazy Krem. Anyway, we beat the boss of this world and get to Gloomy Glutch, a haunted world. It's pretty gloomy, alright. Not much to say about this world, other than the worst level is in this world. You have to be the spider and create your own way without anything around you to save you if you should fall. It's horrendous! So we kill old ghost crow again, we f and we finally get there. K rules keep. It's our island. <laughs> it's cute. Arctic Abyss. Stay cool. Yeah, this is where the game really kicks you in the testicles or the egg stocks, whatever you prefer. Water that turns into ice, an elevator stage that can crush you if you step one way wrong, and even a world where you are the snake that has to jump upwards to not get too close to the toxic waste. This place is hell, a fitting difficulty for the final stretch. I mean, the game can't get harder from this point on, right? <laughs> and finally, here we are. Stronghold Showdown. Sounds awesome. Let's go inside. Well, there we go. I wish they were used a more fitting music for the Kong himself. Okay, maybe too early to celebrate. Let's get up to the flying croc. You'll never catch me, Batman! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Okay, this world actually only has two stages, and the first one is pretty hard. So after several tries in that world, we meet him. So this entire match is like a memory game. Dodge his stuff, grab the cannon, and if there's one thing I've learned from pirates, then it is the fact that cannonballs go into cannons, even if it's an enemy cannon. Come on, Diddy, don't screw with me now, goddammit! Oh god, 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 I did it! Oh. But I know King K. Rule. First you think he's defeated, and then... HA! I KNEW IT! COME HERE, YOU! Well, I guess that explains why it's not in Smash. Jesus. And then we get a little speech from Cranky Kong. He shows you your stats, so to speak. I kinda suck, I'll admit. And that's when the credits roll, and you can see every character that was in the game. And that's the game. Now, I will admit that... Oh no... Yeah, there is an extra world. The Lost World. You remember when I mentioned those creme coins? Yeah, when you get 15 of those, then you can go to this guy, Clubba, and pay him to send you to this world. 
Now I know what you're thinking, that 15 creme coins wouldn't be that hard to find to get to the lost world, right? But the thing is, it costs 15 creme coins each level. Now there are 6 levels in the stage lost world. 5 of them you have to pay for. That means 75 creme coins. And how many creme coins are there all in the game? 75. So to get to the true final boss, to truly finish this game, you need to 100% it. Damn. The last boss is Captain K rule again. Though this time the boss is more like the impossible game than a memory one. Then the game ends with the island of Krem sinking to the bottom of the ocean and the Kongs look onward as the captain sails off to the next installment. Well, I don't really know how to end this video, so um...